Welcome to this video on the problem, purpose statement and questions of PPS and Q for a comprehensive literature review. A comprehensive literature review is a standalone literature review paper. This technique, the PPS and Q, is adapted from Sharon Merriam and particularly her book on qualitative research. The PPS and Q is one page only, and um, you can make it shorter than a page, but you really want to stick to the one page. It includes a problem statement, a purpose statement, and research questions. Now, there are lots of different ways to do problem purpose statements, but this is done in a particular way, and we want you to follow this particular way. The PPS and Q is both a thinking and a writing tool, and it can help you to keep your research focused throughout your review. You'll probably need to rework the PPS and Q as you read the literature because your thinking will change as you begin reading. Why do we stick to one page? Well, we really want you to focus on the core elements of your research. Because this is a conceptualization technique, we want you to focus on only what's essential. And many people struggle to do this, particularly in the beginning, but just keep working at it until you can get it into one page. The process will ensure that you make decisions about what will become in, in the foreground of your research and what will move into the background. And these decisions are important and they will really help your writing later on because you won't be making those decisions at that stage. So we begin with the problem statement and the problem statement contains a sentence or two that states the key problem the review will focus on. And this is, um, it needs to be articulated as a problem. And it's the problem that the research will address. There, there would be many other related problems, but these will fall into the background. So you'll bring one problem into the foreground. That's the focus of this research. Research is always conceptualized around a problem because otherwise there would be no need to do the research. We'd say, so what? Why do I need to read this? And identifying the problem provides the rationale for doing this review. So the more you explain this problem as a problem, the more your audience is going to be interested in what you, you will produce. In a review that's not well conceptualized, the research is often still at the broad topic level and hasn't really been focused enough around a specific problem. So for example, I want to do research on mature students who return to studying after many years away from educational institutions. There could be many problems related to this topic. Financial problems, family-related problems, access problems, studying problems. But if you focus on, for example, the studying problems, then you have now focused the problem in one particular area, and now we know it's about learning, and it's not about the other problems. The problem statement also includes a sentence or two that provides a context for the study. And the context really is providing the details about where this takes place, at what time, and what are the key elements of this particular project. And without a context, the study isn't, isn't grounded and it becomes quite vague. So mature students, more mature students are returning to higher education institutions in Canada than ever before. Statistics from, etc., etc. So when you describe the context, you're providing a bit of background, and you're, you're showing where this research is taking place. You're grounding it in a context. The problem statement for a comp comprehensive review also includes a sentence or two identifying the key concepts used in the review. Academic knowledge is dialogic and contested, so people have different views about the meanings of concepts. So rather than showing dictionary definitions, which has this idea that there's one, uh, one definition, you want to show debates and align yourself with the thinking um, and your interpretation of those concepts. So you're aligning yourself with others in the, in the research literature. So for example, key concepts in this review are returning students, older university students, learning, study habits. And there may be debates in the literature over any of these concepts. Is it appropriate to use the term older or mature? And you would need to align yourself with that. The problem statement also needs evidence to support the claims being made. And evidence in this case takes the form of published resources. So your, your problem statement would need to contain references. 
The problem statement also needs to have some kind of a logic to it, a 1 plus 1 equals 2. This means that one point builds on another to make overall sense. And each project has its own logic, so the order of these components, the problem, the context, the concepts, will, will change according to each project. So your project might begin with the context, another project might begin with the problem. Following the problem statement, you get the purpose statement. And the purpose statement is really what guides this project. Um, and you want to close the sentence, the purpose of this review is to, because it states the, the broad goal of, of this, this review. So, for example, you, you might want to say to present the debates in spe of, on specific concepts, to explore the existing research on particular issues, um, to explore the problem in a particular way. For example, the purpose of this review is to, to explore the research literature in Canada and the USA on difficulties older students experience when returning to educational studies after a gap period. So the purpose statement is followed by the research questions, and these questions are the broad guiding questions that guide the research. Now the questions must unpack the research problem. So if you, take, if you think of the research problem as an apple pie, then the questions must make up the slices in that apple pie. They must be framed as questions. They can't relate to another apple pie or another problem. Otherwise, you'll end up writing several papers. So make sure that you have your problem statement near you when you unpack the questions. So for example, what does returning student mean? What research is available on older university students? What studies have been conducted on the study habits of older returning students? What do the research findings in the literature show about older returning students learning? All those questions are around the problem. Uh, just a few more points on questions. Try to avoid yes-no questions, questions that have yes-no answers. Uh, try to make the questions unambiguous. You don't want to have too complicated questions questions and try to have only one question in each question. Here's an example of a problem purpose statement and this is pulling together all the examples we've discussed. Older students find it difficult to return to studying after a number of years away from educational environments. There's the problem stated as a problem. You can see what the challenge is. More older students are returning to higher education institutions in Canada than ever before. This is followed by you can include a bit of background which explains the context, where this is taking place, and a bit more description around the problem. Key concepts, university learning, older students, returning students. These are apparent from the sentences above. The purpose of this review is to explore the research literature in Canada and the USA on difficulties older students experience when returning to educational studies after a gap period. There's the purpose statement. And this is then followed by the research questions. You can see it's, it's a paragraph, you know, it might be three quarters of a page. It can be less than a page, but not more than that. You can expand the context and the background to the problem a little bit if, if you feel that's necessary and it needs a bit more explanation. But really, these are the core components. They all relate to each other. We can see what the key concepts are and relate those concepts to the problem, the purpose and the research questions. Here's another example. Many doctoral students uh, writing dissertations experience anxiety, particularly when receiving feedback on dissertations. So this one begins with the context. There is a huge emotional investment in writing feedback, and for some students, their whole sense of self is at stake. And there are references to provide evidence. Yet feedback, particularly from supervisors, is an essential part of formative assessment for graduate students in their writing and in shaping their identities as scholars. Feedback is often fundamental to learning and to producing appropriate quality writing. It is also frequently problematic. There's the problem with a little bit more of explanation. Writing is emotional, and despite a growing field of research that attests to this, emotions are often not explicitly recognized as part of the doctoral student writing journey. The purpose of the research was to explore the emotions doctoral students experience when they receive feedback on their dissertations. 
there's the purpose statement. The project also aimed to investigate, and here are three questions written as questions, unambiguous, transparent, and um, not yes, no questions. And you can see quite clearly that the concepts are doctoral writing, feedback on doctoral writing, emotions, and doctoral writing. Um, again, each project will have its own logic, but you can see that one thing builds onto another in this particular example. It, it flows, there's a flow to it and a coherence to it, and that's what you want. The research questions relate back to the problem and the problem statement. So just a few tips on writing your problem purpose statement. Don't be afraid to write the problem purpose statement as soon as you can. Even if you don't feel ready, you don't feel like you know all the components, just jot it down on a piece of paper because having something down will really get you going in the process and you'll see you know more than you actually think you do. Just keep the problem purpose statement to one page or less. Read your problem purpose statements aloud. In reading it aloud, you'll hear inconsistencies and problems with logic. Um, when you come to write the problem purpose statements or write your paper, include the problem purpose statement in the introductory section of the paper within the first three pages because it gives your reader a clear idea of what you're trying to do. If you get stuck at any point, rewrite the problem purpose statement and you'll see it will help you move forward. So getting feedback on your problem purpose statements. Uh, I'm going to suggest two ways of getting feedback. One is written feedback and this is where you give a classmate or a member of your group a copy of your problem purpose statement or you do it on Google Docs and you ask the reader to follow these instructions. So basically the reader must go through all the components and mark on the paper where these appear. So is the problem statement, is the problem stated clearly? Your reader must underline where they think the problem is and go through all the other components and underline on the text where these components are. Um, what this does is that if your reader is underlining a sentence that is not the problem, you then know that you have to rework that problem. If they are underlining what you think is the problem, then you know your reader's picked up on that. And you go through all the components that we've been through. They can check the research questions. Do they unpack the problem? And do they take the research, guide the research as overall questions? Have the key concepts been identified? Um, and if a reader marks all of this on the paper, you will they don't need to know your topic or understand the ins and outs of your topic. They just need to be able to give you a response as a reader, and then you can rework your problem purpose statement. Another very useful way of doing this is to read your problem purpose statement aloud to your classmate or your group. And in reading it, you will notice things that are not quite right. And once you're done, then you ask your group members to, to tell you, to, to respond back to you with all the components in, in the same way as you would do it in writing. And if they can tell you what your problem is, then you know you've got, um, you've articulated it well. Okay, so let's go over the key points of this video. The PPSQ is a technique to conceptualize your review. It helps you to make decisions about what to include and what to leave out and what to focus on. As you work through your review, refer to it often, um, and it will help you keep your writing focused and on point. The key components of the problem purpose statement and questions is a statement of the problem, a sentence or two around the context, an identification of the key concepts, a logic for the build-up of the problem concept, context and concepts, evidence in the form of references, a purpose statement and research questions. Thank you very much for watching this video and I wish you all the best with your problem purpose statements.